Hey guys, I'm going to try my best to make a, a relatively short video on just how to get started with Galactic Civilizations 4, some of the early moves you should do. So let's go to a new game. So I made a custom Civilization, click it on there. Let's go, once you make a custom, you can click on Edit. And the things to look for is go to their Abilities tab. Now you have Civilization Traits, you just click to remove it. But the best one in my opinion is plus two moves. Helps you explore faster, helps your military fleets travel and your colony ships, helps everyone just, everything's done faster. And for the second one, it's optional, but I like the plus two to ship range and sensor range. As your ship range is very limited in the beginning. Now for your civilization abilities, you can get things like Voyagers, plus two sensor range, which is good for exploration and uh, finding enemies. You get additional ship move. And you can also get a trait where you get plus 25% ship range but the abilities are pretty cool so you might not choose to go with that so let's just jump into the game so on here your options are this is your individual sec sector size i like large now the number of sectors i've went to here is just one set it's just one sector that i'm playing that'd be two three and then just keeps going up i like uh three large sectors so I like to have a lot of opponents. Now for game difficulty, normal is very easy. So don't be too afraid to try out bright or even genius as you get familiar with the game. Research is very, very slow. There's so much to research. So I put the fast. It doesn't feel fast. It's just a little bit better than normal. So that's the only thing I touched there. And then civilization proximity, it's kind of, it's so random. I don't like to be too far away because there's so much benefits in being nearby other civilizations with trade and, you know, trading technologies and things. So I like to do not too close. You definitely don't want them real close. Now I keep all of this the same. When it comes to resources, if you want to micromanage the star bases, the default is occasional. But quite often, you'll be building one mining star base just to get one resource. Sometimes you can get two. Maybe if you're lucky, you can get three. But you'd also need a technology that expands your mining star bases range. So I like to go for common. It's not always perfect. It, it could be lackluster depending on your, your location. But this allows you to usually get at least two resources with one mining star base. And you can get three, maybe even four if you get those additional technologies. So that's the one thing I suggest is if you don't like micromanaging, go with common. And then this is just where you uh, set up your, who's going to be your opponents. Just left click to remove people. Uh, I like to have about 50% or less of what the maximum is. The maximum will change based on the sector size and how many sectors. But I think like a 50% or just below that is uh, pretty good. So here, we're at 17 out of 39 max. I'm just going to go ahead and start the game. Okay, this is the first thing you see. I'm just going to zoom out. So this is the large sector size. These are all the stars that are in it. Now your first option as you go down to executive orders, you have the telescope takeover, which costs 15 control. You start it with 100, and it, it regenerates very slowly. But there's a cooldown of like 30 turns before I can use this again. I'm going to go and use that. Now, this is just for helping me explore. I want to spread out this direction and this direction. Uh, it's going to be difficult, but maybe I can reveal these two stars. So I'll kind of go like that. And we revealed one decent planet. Actually, that's pretty good. And oh, one over there too. So my first, I don't know if that's within range. So I'll click on my colony ship. Yeah, that's within range. So once I colonize this, this range will expand again. Because the range is always limited to the nearby planet. So that's great. I'll be able to expand the range. 
very quickly of how far ships can go. And then you have your probe, which has a range of uh, unlimited. We'll just go and explore down here. And then your flagship is uh, quite powerful to begin with. And it also has a survey module. So you can automatically go and survey all these anomalies and artifacts and things. And then you, you get artifacts down here or you get various benefits and things like that. But for the early game, it's really important just to go and explore. So my range will soon expand out there. So we'll head out that direction. Also, always go for the draft colonists. Because there's, there's no drawback to it. So we get a free colony ship. If you were to build a colony from your shipyard, it's going to take one of your citizens. So you start off on your planet with five citizens. You're going to have to board one of those onto your colony ship. It's not that terrible or anything, but there's really no, no uh, need for it. Okay, so the first thing on your planet you have to do is you have to place your capital city. And this will give a plus two level bonus to anything adjacent. So I'm going to want manufacturing. And there's two really good manufacturing slots. Well, it's kind of basic, but it's a, it's at least plus one level. And then I'll put my manufacturing, my industrial center on one of these. So I'm going to have to get... Uh, I'm definitely going to have to get uh, my manufacturing up first. So if I put that there, it would benefit these two. That might be the best way to go. You'll have things like this. Some are permanent. If I upgrade it, I'll start to get Arnor Spice. But some things like this, once you research it, it removes this and the artifact goes into your artifact slot on the other screen. We'll want to get rid of that once I have enough manufacturing where it doesn't take 10 turns. But uh, I usually do this and then by the time this is done, I'll have researched stuff where I have additional manufacturing uh, special buildings to put down. But you can only, always just click on this and put the manufacturing district. These are just the generic ones. And you can put these wherever you want, wherever it makes sense. Unfortunately, I'm taking a, a science spot, but it just makes better sense to do manufacturing first. And then science, I can start building up over here or something. This gives plus three science bonus, bonus levels. So I might want to put it in a place like this. We will be able to terraform. So when we get terraform in slots, I can add a new land piece there. So maybe this is a good spot for building up my science. But we'll worry about that later. Now on your planet, you click on it, you'll have uh, orbital improvements. I always forget about these. In the early game, we don't have these resources like Durantium and Prometheum. Once we research Universal Translator, that will unlock the bazaar, the bazaar and then we can buy it if we have enough money. But uh, you can build things like Orbital Prison minus 20% of crime. Crime is going to be a real problem. So you'll want to get that and then the Atmospheric Cleanser. So uh, the more pollution, the less food our colonies produce. So check your crime. The more crime, uh, the faster it grows. So the pollution and things are not too bad. Approval is okay. So this is sort of like, uh, it'll, it'll be a little, bit, a little bit before we can start doing stuff like this. But the first research is always colonial policies. And this will unlock our, our policies and our leaders. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I have two colony ships. So this one's going there, and that one's going there. And then I usually do two probes. But then you want to build constructors to build your star bases. And the first star base I usually do is I'll do an economic one to get benefits for my my main my home world. So we've researched colonial policies, and this will. So for the next one, if I want more range, I'll go to subspace scanning. It's only four turns, so we'll get plus two range. It doesn't really matter. You can choose what you want. 
but I can click on the policy slot here or here. Uh, fast exploration plus two moves is awesome. Minus 50% hit points. So this is only a good early game when nothing's attacking us. It's going to make our flagships very weak and we can't replace those. I go with Heart of Empire. More growth, more, in more influence, more uh, economic stuff. And then it unlocks the leaders. So we want someone with high diligence. He's going to be our Minister of Exploration. Someone with science. We're going to have to hire three. This guy kind of sucks. We can use him later under commanders. We can place him on one of these ships. And the ship will spawn at our home, home world. So we have to hire this guy, right? Yeah. So he has plus nine diligence. So he gets plus nine range. We all get plus nine range for all the ships. And all the ships are get plus one move. And we get plus one tech slot, which means another additional option to choose what to research next. Plus a benefit to the science. That's plus six approval. So the higher their uh, uh, their ability there, the higher these numbers will be. But it's always only plus one move, as far as I know. And same as the plus one random tech slots. But that's massive because maybe got that chosen. Now our range is is nine spaces further. So we can really do some exploration and find the further colonies. So we just colonized our first planet here. Now it's going to be managed by the AI and all the resources are going to go to our nearest sector planet or core world, sorry. If we want to manage the planet, we'll have to hire a governor. We, we have what a leader already, but I'm not going to have any core, sec, uh, core planets. Unless it's really good. And probably further out. So for now, we're just going to get all the all the generation of resources and research. It's going to go to Nova Prime. So we're not going to be able to like look at the planet or or affect what improvements are built. Like we can with Nova Prime. Unless we put a governor there. Okay, so I'm about to colonize the second planet here. And we'll start getting uh, these options down here. So this will let, give us one point in egalitarianism. And these other benefits or negative effects. This will give us one point in progressivism and one discount in individualism. So individualism is going to cost us like 10 points. But with this benefit, it'll cost us nine points instead of ten. Uh, so I like individualism. Progressivism is good. That's for uh, research. Egalitarianism is awesome. For you get the first options, you get three free colony ships and ten percent approval bonus for all your planets. So it really depends what you want to go for. Like all of these. Reduce tiles. I don't want to reduce tiles. That's horrible. So I'll go with this. I'll get one egalitarianism trait discount. What determines the tiles is the class. So this has 22 tiles. And Nova Prime has 32. So with the research, I've, up, I've unlocked another uh, manufacturing building, the planetary generator. So I'll put that right there. We start getting this synergy. So we'll get plus four levels. I'll just let that go for now. So I'll just add, I don't have any buildings now, so I'm just gonna add a manufacturing district like that. And I'll probably start adding some research. So they'll get plus three levels from this building. And I can do an executive order, get another only ship for free. And I can send that to this planet down here, which looks pretty good. So we can do the independence, which will give us minus 15% decay from colonies from non-sector planets or asteroids or things. We get the independence ship, which also has a survey module. So that's good. But if I want plus three colony ships, I want to wait until I can afford this. 
It'll cost 10 culture points, but I only have eight so far. And you know, depending, like I, my civilization has a, they're individual, individualists, so they get a discount. So this is actually easier for me to get. So if I'm looking here, there's not too many planets yet, but there could be. And I don't know if other civilizations are close. Sometimes they're really far. And sometimes I'm absolutely surrounded by other civs. So far, I don't think I've found anyone. I'll have to wait and see. Like, do I get egalitarianism or what? So I've unlocked Universal Translator. Now we can talk to other civs once we discover them. But this also leads to the hyperwave radio. And that will allow me to recruit the leaders and then turn them into commanders to get those free ships. And the translator also unlocks the bazaar. We start buying uh, special resources. So I'll go to hyperwave radio just to show you guys. And now we can use the bazaar. And uh, so for these uh, planetary improvements down here on our core worlds, these improvements require usually durantium. They might call it, uh, some of them might require promethium, but I'm gonna need a lot of uh, durantium. So once I unlock these technologies, I can do like a atmospheric cleanser. Let's see what our pollution is. Our food level, level is really high, so we don't, really, we don't need that yet. We'll need a prison pretty soon. I could go for an atmosphere cleanser. And we don't have the credits for this. But it'll reduce crime by 20%. Space elevator gives you more manufacturing, so that's really good for your home world. And basically anything else you want, but the atmospheric cleanser and prison are kind of mandatory. So we'll colonize that planet. Uh, we got these options again. I guess I'll just go for this one. It's fairly positive. I don't see many planets to that are worth colonizing. So for this one, I'll just go for the independence to show you. And the independence will spawn up here. It's kind of a weak ship, but as it discovers anomalies and things, It'll level up, or if you do combat with it, we'll put an automatic survey. And it'll go survey all of these things. So we got the hyperwave radio. Now, when we start building star bases, you'll need the modules. We start off with three, but researching this will allow us to, to build the modules. It's not that important. I'm just going to research it to demonstrate. But we got that new technology, which gives a policy slot. But now we can go to the commander slot and we can drag this guy onto one of these ships. These aren't that powerful. It's like, it's two hit points. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the fast exploration because that reduces our hit points on all of our ships. So these are, it's five hit points. This is the strongest of the three. Once that ship dies, this guy's gone, and the ship's gone for good as well. And the ship spawns right there. Usually I'll just join him up with the Independent. The Independent is... No, the Independence is right there. So I'll click and drag. Our logistics is only 10, but both of these ships only take up two logistics each. So now it's four out of 10. We'll have to research things like artificial gravity to give us plus four logistics. So that we can start getting like a bigger fleets. In the early game, we're gonna be weak for a long time. Yeah, that radio technology also gives us this explorer, which can survey. It doesn't do any damage, so I just put on automatic. So I just built a constructor and I put, I'm gonna do an economic star base. So I kind of put this far away. It'll only benefit core worlds that have a governor. And a military star base, it only benefits, like people can still invade your planet. 
it only benefits your fleets. It makes them a whole lot stronger. Stronger shields, attack, it points, I think, a lot of stuff. It, it might offer some siege defense to the planet. I'm not sure about that. But they can take your planets without going after the military star base. The military star base can also attack from a distance with its missiles, which are longer range, and its beam weapons. But for to start off, I'm going to put an economic base. If you want to mine resources, so we have plus five manufacturing gross income. And we'll start getting various modules we can add. And they'll take a module from us. And we have two. If you want to actually mine the resources though, you have to build a mining star base. Can't be just uh, economic or anything else. Okay, so I have a couple more constructors. So once you get the constructor in range, you can see that it's going to be able to mine these resources if you build a mining star base. There are technologies that will extend the range, but for right here, we're only going to be able to get two resources, which is fine. So I'll go and click on this, build a mining star base. Don't forget. And then we'll have different technologies. So to start, we get only 0.1 of each per turn. This will give us 0.2. If we had Tekapods, they're a rare resource you get from planets, I think. Yeah, that, that's the only place I've seen them anyways. Got a huge boost to mining. But this will start giving us... It's blue once you've uh, once you're mining it. Okay, with this constructor, I'll build a military star base. This is way too early to do this. But uh, when you're with, within range, you'll have options with like the missile to click on and then click on enemy fleets within range. And then in your shipyard, these are the freighters. You'll send those to the home worlds of uh, civilizations that you discover. I haven't found any within range, so those aren't really going to go go anywhere. Okay, we finally found our first civilization. So when you first discover them, it'll unlock ability to talk to them, obviously. And we'll say, we'll go down here and go to speak to. We'll click on whichever one it is. Always do this as soon as you meet them. I have something else in mind. We would publicly like to proclaim our never-ending friendship with you. This will give us plus one to making any trade deals with them. You can see here, we proclaim friendship with them. So when you first meet them, sometimes you can trade, sometimes you can't. Or the trade deals are terrible. They're just not very cooperative. But if they come to me, if they really want something, sometimes they'll give me a great deal. In those situations, don't click on the reject button because you won't be able to manually do what they wanted. They, they won't be interested. But yeah, this will just get things started. And if he was nearby, within range, I would send my freighter to him, get some trade going, and getting those technologies is really awesome. Uh, you're not going to have all these diploma, you're not going to be able to have all these like trees and things, which is really weird. You have to research diplomacy and start getting like a, a cultural treaty and then eventually a scientific treaty and you should have that stuff in the beginning. These are like uh, spacefaring civilizations, they should know how to do this. But anyways, guys, I should cut the video here. It's already really long for a short video. But I hope this gives you some idea of the things to do. I'm not an expert at this game. But uh, hopefully this video was helpful for you. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Oh, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video.